Muhammad, the self-proclaimed prophet of Islam, bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves. He called Ethiopians raisin heads and said that Satan looks like a black man. So why was this Nigerian singer sentenced to death? Okay, the Muslims killed her because uh, they said she blasphemed against their religion. Uh, ser uh, seriously, in Ghana, most of the times when we talk about the radicality or radicalism of Islam, people do not uh, uh, people do not understand. I'll be get to me. They will be like, you just hate. You just are uh, sprouting out hatred against uh, Islam. But that is an it. I'll be get to me. What the individuals in the Islamic religion are uh, not the ones I am talking about here. I'm talking about the religion itself. I'm talking about the system itself. I'll be get to because it was it was established on hatred. Okay, at first Muhammad had informed the Muslims to pray facing uh, Jerusalem. But what happened? Okay, after he he recognizing the idea that, or he realizing that the Jews were not acceding to the idea that he was uh, prophesied of in the Bible, or he was mentioned anywhere in the Bible, seriously, he took them after killing the Banu tribe. Okay, the Banu Kanuka, Banu Nadot, Banu Kareza, Obi gets with me. After doing all this, he just told them that uh, Allah had revealed another verse to him, telling them that they should rather face Mecca instead of Jerusalem. Okay, Muhammad was was a caravan robber okay he was an armed robber on the arabian peninsula that's exactly what history history says okay and i'm going to give you proofs uh from david wood's camp i'll be getting with me that's exactly what he used to be doing he used to be trading blacks i'll be getting with me he used to be trading uh human beings <laughs> i'll be getting with me he would be um uh he would be hijacking uh tracks he would be hijacking caravans on the arabian peninsula traders those that were going to trade um in syria in uh, the other countries and all that yemen and co uh, he would just hijack their caravans and would uh take booty i'll be getting with me that's exactly what he used to be doing okay prior to he uh limit that uh, Allah had revealed him, he revealed himself to him or some angel appeared to him the so-called angel that uh, squeezed him st 30 times because he had uh, not uh, wanted to try to read something okay and instead of Allah to have made something to show that perhaps that was the actual miracle uh, that happened in the Quran or happened in Muhammad's life, being a prophet, okay, because if he had been able to read, since Muslim says he was illiterate and he had been illiterate till death. Well, we taking a quick break and we are returning to this. Why was this Nigerian singer uh, sentenced to death for blasphemy? So we taking a quick break and we are going to hear the video out. You welcome back, beloved. May God richly bless you for waiting for us. Yes, quickly, let's go to David Wood. Muhammad, the self proclaimed prophet of Islam, bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves. He called Ethiopians raisin heads and said that Satan looks like a black man. Muhammad warned his followers that a black man would eventually destroy the Kaaba. According to Muhammad, if you dream about a black woman, it's because a plague is coming. Under Sharia, the penalty for calling Muhammad a black man is death. Muhammad's followers institutionalized the African slave trade more than a thousand years before the United States even existed. Ironically, in northern Nigeria today, if you say something offensive about Muhammad, a Sharia court will sentence you to death. The BBC reports. A musician in Nigeria's northern state of Kano has been sentenced to death by hanging for blaspheming against the Prophet Muhammad. Wow, the Prophet Muhammad. So you see, beloved, um, Muslims actually have or attain some privileges in countries dominated by Christians. Or we get to me. Well, I do not go by this popular idea or say uh, contrary to popular belief that Ghana is a Christian religion, uh, was a Christian country. It is never true. 
<laughs> okay, that's what people say that Ghana is a Christian country. Well, it's they say this because they think Islam hasn't any dominance over here, or domination over here, or the Christians are the majority in this uh, country. But who are Christians at all? Or be, that's exactly where the problem is or where the problem lies. But the idea that Ghana is a Christian country is a lie. It is never true. Or we get to me. Yes, in areas or in countries that Muslims has domination, uh, seriously, the privileges they attain, the privileges they secure or obtain are not attained by Christians as well. I've been giving you these examples. Okay, a whole Turkish government had to fly into Ghana to help be Muslims build a national cathedral. What is it? Um, 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 national mosque. National mosque, rather. I hope you get to a whole Turkish government did, did, did this. This tells you of how discriminative the Islamic religion is. And Muslims always propagate the idea that their religion becomes uh, overwhelmed or becomes superfluous in a community. Muslims do not want to live alongside other religions or by length with other religions. No. Okay, Islam divides the world into two. Islam divides the world into two. Dar al-Islam and Dar al-Hab. What is Dar al-Hab means the house of war. Uh, the, the house of war, the place of ignorance, the area of ignorance. Muslims see the areas around our world or within our world that are not having Islamic majority to be a threat to Islam. Therefore, they have to do or devise some means, some ways and means to attain or secure those kind of those lands. So Ghana, Ghana must be very careful. Okay, and all the countries within our, 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 our within this planet must be very careful. Those countries that are not having Islamic uh, domination already. If you really, if you want example, just uh, glance through the uh, areas that are having Islamic domination. What about talk about Egypt? You can talk about the northern part of Nigeria. You can talk about um, the Middle East. Those countries within Middle East. Okay, what about the lands that were having Christian domination? Okay, during the time of the apostles, you can talk of uh, Antioquia. Okay, and it is written in the Bible that that was the easiest place where uh, the people were, the followers of Christ, the disciples of Christ, were first, were first uh, referenced as Christians. These areas have been dominated by Muslims. Okay, at the mouth of sword, they took them at the mouth of sword. So that's exactly what's going on around our world. Muslims will try their possible best to, uh, to, to establish aggression. Okay, they will help you to appeal to fear. And you'll be like, no, I don't have to mention Islam. I don't have to mention a, 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 the Quran or else Muslims are going to uh, beat me or they're going to kill me. They're going to do this. But, you, but you, do, you know what happened? They also go to the marketplaces, go to Tafo in Kumasi, go to uh, areas like, um, what is it? Uh, there are areas within Kumasi. Uh, go to PZ, okay? Go to several areas within uh, Kumasi and uh, Eastern Region, Western Region, and all that. Muslims uh, has the uh, uh, has the gut to uh, to arrange themselves so well to an extent that they lambast Christianity. Okay, they try their possible best to dismantle the Quran. What is it? The Bible. They take the Bible, they hold it in their arm, they toss it up and down, and they'll be like, "This book is corrupted." And you will not get any single Christian that will be able to, to go there to challenge this ideology. But had it been that it was a Christian who was doing this to their Quran or their religion, they would go there and try their possible best to uh, establish aggression. Seriously, Christians are being reluctant in this country, Ghana. Christians are being reluctant, most especially this Church of Christ preachers. Most of you are cowards. Cowardice is what is taking you, most of you, into hell. Most of you are cowards. You fear to mention Islam. You fear to preach, um, to, to, to preach Islam or to preach to uh, Muslims. You fear to take the gospel into Islamic communities. You fear to do that. 
And for that matter, you try your possible best to also achieve the same fear within your church members. The so-called, most of you, the elders and all that within the church, most of you are cowards. When Jesus Christ was sending the apostles out in Matthew 28, verse number 18 through 20, what did he say? He said the gospel needed to be preached, uh, to be spread across the globe. The gospel needed to be preached to all person kinds, all nation kinds, all people kinds. That's exactly what Jesus Christ said. He didn't exempt some people. He didn't say that you need to preach to only Pentecostals, only Anglicans, only Presbyterians and all that. You are cowards, most of you. Okay, you are cowards. Out of 100%, you get 90% church of Christ preachers that are cowards. That fears to preach to Islam or to preach to Muslims. It's about time we rise up to face the challenge. It's about time we rise up to take the mantle upon our shoulders. Muslims do blaspheme against Christianity. Muslims tell you Christ isn't any God. They tell, most of them will tell you Jesus Christ was an illegitimate son. Most of them will tell you... Um, what is it? Uh, Christianity is corrupt. Okay? Christ was only uh, a prophet. He wasn't any, any deity. His blood can never save anybody. And they blaspheme in a way fancy. Like they, they, they say this gasp. Uh, what is it? They, they are worse about Jesus Christ are so much so disgusting. Okay? He, he, uh, what is, he had to be circumcised. He, he went private. And he... he, he, he eased on himself as a baby and blah 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 that, therefore he cannot be God if they say all these stuff about Jesus Christ but we fear to let them know what their prophet their so called prophet did we fear to let them know what's at stake within their religion the bad time we rise up to face Muslims boot by boot or boot for boot I'm not talking about physical war I'm talking about the war of knowledge we reasoning with Muslims. Do you understand? That is it. It's about we reasoning with each other. I'm not talking about you fighting anybody or you insulting anybody. I do not insult anybody over here. But I tell you to be bold. The bad time you rise up as a Christian. Okay, because Ghana, Ghana is shaking. Ghana is shaking. And Ghana is a great target. If you don't know, I'm going to play a video to you here and surely you will see what's going on over here well we ended up here and yes the nigerian singer was sentenced to death because muslims said that uh, she was blaspheming and i think we will continue this this the part one and we continue from there uh skin code cosmetics is avail available for you whatsoever you are around the world make sure to contact the number that is imagined on your screen and surely delivery services are available to deliver them at your doorsteps bye bye <music>